At the East Tennessee Veterans Memorial, there are 19 pillars like this one with the names of Medal of Honor recipients from East Tennessee, including Alvin York. He survived his action in World War I. Others did not. Ray Duke here died in action during his fight in Korea. But memories of these veterans live on through their loved ones. Tonight, we hear from the widow and the daughter of World War II recipient Paul Huff. I miss him every day. I, uh, he's been gone in September. It'll be 28 years. Betty Huff learned her late husband Paul wanted to marry her aboard a plane. And this photo captures the moment the paratrooper asked for her hand. She agreed, and then he jumped out. So you said yes, and he said, all right, I'll see you later. Yeah, no, he jumped out. <laughs> Paul Huff loved to joke and tease, but a couple of years before his fun-loving proposal, he was in a serious fight in World War II. Italy, February 1944, in his mid-20s, leading a six-man patrol, Huff would earn the military's highest award for valor. Did he ever talk about his war service? Only the funny stuff. Only the funny stuff. Mm -hmm. The World War II Medal of Honor citation says Corporal Huff put himself in the line of fire, crawling solo 75 yards through a minefield, taking out an enemy machine gun position and leading his men to safety. Then, in a follow-up assault, the citation reads, he succeeded in routing an enemy company of 125 men, showing intrepid leadership and daring combat skill. Where did he keep the medal? Where did he keep it? <laughs> <laughs> in the box. In a drawer. So, I mean, really, he, he was just, he was a regular per. He, you know, didn't, he didn't, we didn't, they didn't go to many conventions or anything. At his funeral, but when they started, they listed, they named all of the medals he got. We had no idea that he had, he has never, ever talked about it. Did he even want to be celebrated at all? No, not really, not really. He was so glad to get home to see his family. Family and tending his small East Tennessee farm were priorities for Paul Huff. And we just lived simple. The decorated combat veteran did shoulder heavy travel duties, returning stateside and crisscrossing the country in the mid-1940s, raising bonds for the war effort. Rare photos capture him forging lasting friendships with fellow Medal of Honor recipients, including World War I hero Alvin York. Colonel, Mrs. Paul Huff and family, I will write you all a few lines this morning. A handwritten letter from York's wife is among the Huff family treasures. Your friend, Gracie, or Mrs. Alvin C. York. <laughs> what a piece of history. That I know, is. isn't that great? Huff was on the front row of history in 1958, just over the shoulder of President Eisenhower as he placed medals of honor on caskets of unknowns from World War II and Korea. I didn't know until I graduated from med school that he had been a pallbearer for the unknown soldier. The East Tennessee soldier would make history again as a Medal of Honor recipient returning to war, this time to Vietnam in 1967. He got special permission to go to Vietnam. Yeah, they're not supposed to go. Vietnam, North Africa, Italy, across his story, 30-plus year military career, Paul Huff stood out for his pension for serving others. Perhaps more impactful than receiving the Medal of Honor, was fulfilling his promise to visit the family of a friend and fellow paratrooper killed in battle. He looked and looked for him till he found him one day. And Do you think that was the most important thing that he did in his military career, was, was that moment? I think so. I think that, would, that uh, made him feel so much better. That story captures this celebrated soldier, a dedicated friend, husband and father until his death in 1994 at the age of 76, buried in a simple grave in his beloved East Tennessee.